Okay, so this video is going to talk you through uh, section 2.1, describing graphs of functions. <coughs> so the first thing we're going to talk about is review from pre-cal. Hopefully none of this is new to you. And actually we've been talking about this in class um, even this year. Um, first thing, first way that you can describe a function or describe a graph is whether or not the function is increasing or decreasing. And remember, a function is increasing is a function is increasing when, as you read from left to right, the y values are actually increasing. So both of these graphs are examples of increasing functions. Decreasing functions, same thing. As you read from left to right, the y value is decreasing. So in this case, do you see from here to here, it's actually increasing. But then from here to here, the function is decreasing. This entire function is decreasing on this side. Okay, also, review from pre-cal, relative maxima and minima. Remember, a maximum, a relative maximum, or a local maximum, is basically a crest of a graph, a high point on a graph. Um, that's called a relative maximum or a local maximum. That's where the function goes from increasing to decreasing. Same thing, a relative or local minimum is where a function goes from decreasing to increasing. It's a low point on a graph. Also remember, in this case, this graph has no minimum. This graph has no maximum. Because, in this case, the minimum is negative infinity, which is not a number. In this case, the maximum would be positive infinity, again, which is not a number. So, this first graph only has a maximum, second graph only has a minimum. Same thing, absolute maxima and minima. Absolute maximum is the absolute highest point on the graph. So, um, in this case, we have two maxima. We have this as a maximum, this is also a maximum. But do you see that this is the highest point on the graph? So this point, um, 5, y equals 5, would be our absolute maximum. And this point, since this graph continues um, into infinite y equals infinity, there is no uh, maximum value. Okay, so next thing we're going to talk about is changing of slope. Um, okay, so once again we're going to be talking about slope, and remember slope is the rate of change. So for example, if we have a function right here that um, we're at, it's as, asking us to draw a graph of a function um, where the average an, annual income has been rising at an increasing rate. Do you see that this graph, remember the rate is the slope of the tangent line, and do you see how x increases, the slope of the tangent line is also increasing? Do you see here's a couple of examples? Do you see the slope of the tangent line down here is pretty low, the yellow is a little bit steeper, the blue is a little bit steeper, so the slope of the tangent line, or the average um, rate of change is increasing. Okay, this brings us to concavity. Without reading through this um, explanation here, the simplest way that I've found to determine the concavity of a function is if you can draw, if you have a curve such as this, and you can draw a tangent line under the graph, under the curve, then it's concave up. Conversely, if you can draw a tangent line above or over the graph, it's concave down. So that's the simplest way to determine whether a function is concave up or concave down. Go ahead and draw a bunch of tangent lines, and if those tangent lines are under the graph, it's concave up. If they're above the graph, it's concave down. Which brings us to inflection points. Inflection points are pretty simple. If you have a graph that is both concave up and concave down, the inflection point is the point at which the concavity changes. So do you see here are some examples of inflection points where your concavity is switching from up to down or down to up? So that's pretty straightforward. 
Intercepts, something you should already know about. It's where the graph crosses the x-axis, where the graph crosses the y-axis. To find the x-intercept, you set y equal to zero. To find the y-intercept, you set x equal to zero. Set y equal to zero and solve for x. Here, you set x equal to zero and solve for y. Hopefully that should be um, pretty straightforward. Next thing we're going to talk about is asymptotes. We are going to have, um, this year, we're going to talk about both horizontal and vertical asymptotes. In pre-cal, you were, became more familiar with um, vertical asymptotes. Vertical asymptotes are basically an asymptote where it's pretty straightforward. It's where um, the function is undefined. Generally, a vertical asymptote is determined by um, a point at which makes the denominator of the function equal to zero. Horizontal asymptotes are a little bit, there's a little bit more to them, and we'll talk about those in the coming weeks, but a horizontal asymptote is the same thing as a vertical asymptote, but it is horizontal, and it obviously extends off forever in the negative and positive x directions, as opposed to vertical asymptotes, which extend off in the negative and positive y directions. So, in your, um, on your prep quiz, you're going to be asked to describe the graph um, with all the six points. Um, you just go through and answer the questions based 